you know in Bram Stoker's Dracula there's this line that I remember hearing and I will never forget and it goes something like this you learn from mistakes not from your successes and as with anything else in life in go-karting this applies and applies strongly hello everybody and welcome I'm your host Captain Awesomeness and today I'm going to cover race number seven at GNJ Cartway in the Ohio Valley Karting Association series that I've been participating in while representing Racing for Vets. So as uh, I have gone over this season right now, uh, going down to Cincinnati and making that drive and having the experiences that I've had so far with just you know absorbing everything and just going through the motions of what it takes to uh, participate in outdoor go-karting and especially something that's a little semi-serious, I had still grassroots, is that mistakes are gonna happen. What you wanna do is learn from those mistakes, not repeat them, but make more new mistakes so that you can learn again and again and again and on the theme of making mistakes you know race 7 wasn't any different so I got to make a lot of mistakes and I'll kind of go over each one of those uh, mistakes uh, as much as I can because I did try to record a little bit now what I did not do is uh, set up a, a camera like you know you see right now and uh, talk about what I was doing at the time simply because uh, there was a little bit of a different event so to say uh, at GNJ Cartway this was a Saturday night race so it wasn't during during the day and that added a lot of complexities for myself behind the scenes and that's why I chose not to record myself at all I'd rather just have the uh, sessions recorded and that's really it anyway so with that out of the way we're gonna go over our uh, I think I won't talk about the practice side but I will talk about uh, how I did in uh, qualifying and then how I did in the pre-final and then how I did in the final so again a little bit of a long video but I'm gonna try to do the best I can to make it as short as possible so let's get going all right so beginning our qualification uh, this is just gonna be real quick I was trying to get the best lap time I could and uh, as you see here we were kind of bunched up a little too close together so what it did create uh, a couple of times for me was a concern that I might not be able to get my uh, fastest lap time that I could potentially try to get especially if a slower driver is in front of me but yeah whatever it didn't matter eventually anyways anyway so I want to also talk about what I do right here you see how I take this turn turn one coming into turn two and then moving flat out before we enter turn three well, towards the end, as you can see, the checkered flag come up. I uh, make a huge mistake right here. I do not take turn two, and I actually ended up having to take a huge, big DQ disqualification. And what that did for me, of course, was uh, that I, instead of being in sixth place, ended up having to go all the way down to I think it was 11th place uh, so real big hit in the uh, in uh, the pride factor but you know it is what it is so moving on from this we go right into our pre-final pre-final as you can see I come right out and I am ready to go uh, placing myself in a position I didn't want to be in but it is what it is uh, so we come out of the pits we uh, go into the prep uh, phase of this and right here my chain decides to say bye-bye and I have no choice but to pull over and uh, this is where I get pretty frustrated and you will see that frustration as uh, I pull over to the side and then talk to you guys while I'm kind of stranded on the track. So this is what happens when the chain flies off and all you can do is just sit and wait for everybody else to race. I'm pretty freaking pissed right now because everything was good to go and uh, I didn't even get to start the race and the chain came off. So final race starts in a little bit. I guess uh, when it gets real uh, pitch black and I will work on trying to fix whatever the heck it is this time that's causing problems for me yet again and uh, I did not have the chain guard on like I typically do so maybe that's what it is but anyway I guess I'll talk to you guys uh, when the final race starts so we tough it out and we go into the final race 
And here, because of what happened in the pre-final and the preceding uh, qualifier, I start in 13th place. I'm sorry, take it back. I think it was 14th place, but or 15th, 15th place. So uh, uh, this actually ends up actually not being so <laughs> bad of a race in that at least uh, this time around I didn't have any qualification issues. Uh, one thing you will notice as uh, we uh, try to uh, clear up the crowd in the first couple of laps is that the footage isn't so good and that's because I later on discovered that my fairing on which I bolt on my camera was a little too loose and it was so loose as a matter of fact that the GoPro was unable uh, to really adjust for the amount of vibrations it was experiencing. So I apologize for this and for the next video I'll do better. So key points to talk about here is that the um, uh, preceding sessions did actually open up a lot of opportunities for me to learn on what to get the car to do since I was experiencing some issues with turn-in and uh, consistency so we fixed all of that and as we started to blast off I felt uh, very 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 confident as a matter of fact the cart in front of me uh, would be uh, the uh, I don't know theme of this race in that this is the same individual um, uh, person who actually ended up causing uh, a bit of a crash. But anyway, here I come through what's called the bus stop turn and I uh, did not do so well executing through there, allowing uh, for a gap between myself and that one person in front of me and allowing another person to inject themselves here. So uh, obviously this kind of enrages me a little bit, but I try to uh, refocus and uh, gather up my senses to uh, focus on what I need to do, which is try to basically get a good session in right so anyway i find myself jetting right in front of 21 right here as he signals for me to go ahead in front of him i take this turn and crash right over the turtle or the curb uh, but somewhere somehow still managed to uh, keep going uh, apparently i was told i i let off a few sparks under the chassis and rightfully so i the, that's a a pretty sturdy concrete um, uh, a curb and it will uh, definitely cause damage to your car. So uh, anyhow, here I am now trying to catch up to the rest of the crowd that's right in front of me. And uh, I do the best I can uh, in terms of finding that pace. And I'm really, really liking the way the cart is acting. And I can see that I'm already kind of getting closer and closer uh, to the rest of the pack in front of me. So uh, that was a pretty good uh, confidence inspiring feeling at the time. But uh, still, you know, a gap is a gap and you have to try to close it the best you can. I see that uh, there is really no opportunity for me right now. I'm just trying to chase people down and that's what I do. So I noticed that I have really caught up uh, again to the Nemesis and the Nemesis has taken the inside line because they're trying to be defensive and they don't want me to get ahead of them, which is fine. Um, I do bump them right here to let them know that I am right behind them. Uh, they seem to be unfazed by it. so. Uh, it is what it is, but uh, you can see that the pack is gathering up up here. So this gives me an opportunity, at least I'm hoping, to try to at least get in front of one other driver if I can find the right momentum and the right moment. Um, but uh, that seems to have been a dream that got shot off right there. Uh, those turns are pretty tight and it's not exactly the most ideal place to try to um, pass someone. So uh, it is what it is. Anyway, so I'm uh, now hunting down my... Uh, I call him Nemesis, but he's not really a Nemesis. He's a great guy. It's just uh, he uh, drives a little bit differently than everybody else. But here I find that I am pretty fast around turn one, and I find myself having to tap them one more time. They look back, and then they take the inside line, which I now think in hindsight was a mistake. I shouldn't have bumped them. I should have just gone around them uh, right there and catch them by surprise, and that would have been my moment to get in front of them. But uh, yep, that is yet another mistake I made and I learned from it, uh, something that I will keep a mental note of uh, further down the line and the uh, subsequent races that we've got going on. Here, uh, still trying to catch up and uh, what I do like about the cart is that I am able to really, really keep pace. Now there's, a, I guess, a driver who uh, had an issue so they broke down so I gained a position right there. Uh, but again, Nemesis, ooh, I hit him real hard right here. 
uh, didn't really mean to, and then he signaled something to me, and I couldn't figure out what he was trying to signal, uh, but it didn't matter to me. I, I just wanted to uh, let them know that they are slower than me, and maybe they should work with me and uh, try to give me that spot, because I really felt confident that I could get in front of him and the driver who was right in front of him. So I uh, really was struggling to try to find the right pocket, but again, uh, hindsight is 2020, and uh, what I did realize after the fact is that maybe I shouldn't have bumped him as many times as I did uh, in that one situation. I should have given him a little bit of a gap like I am right now, and then uh, knowing that I am faster than him on turn one, use that momentum then to go past him right at the end of turn two right here. And uh, that didn't happen, and uh, yeah, it's a price I had to pay. So ahead of time, I can let you know that I was in this position all the way to the very end. And then finally at the very last lap I see the checkered flag and that gives me a sigh of relief that the race is finally over with. I uh, on purpose take turn two the way I'm supposed to because I do not want to get DQ'd again for a nonsense reason. And uh, that ends the race right there for us. And you know what? I will be the first to admit that I really uh, had a 
sense of arrogance when I first went into uh, this kind of go-karting thinking, oh, I know everything about it all, especially with the kinds of stuff that I had done in the rental go-karting side. But little did I know that this was gonna be a whole new steep learning curve for me and all the mistakes that I was making at times would feel frustrating. Why? Because I had thought that I was past all of them, but now I was making the same mistakes again on a different platform, not realizing that the fact is that it is a different platform and it required for me to adjust to that. And for some reason in the beginning of the racing season, I, it just, that concept didn't work. But um, again, mistakes upon mistakes upon mistakes. So the way I see uh, this first season of mine in real go-karting working out is that it's going to be nothing but a series of mistakes I'll make over and over and over, um, but not the same mistakes. It's just uh, mistakes. And what I am hoping to do is that I'll uh, uh, take all the lessons learned and of course use them for the next year where I definitely plan on doing a lot better You know the fact is that I did end up in the top 10 spots in the qualifying So all I need to do is uh, make sure that I don't allow for any kind of situation to happen That would penalize me uh, in the way that I got to experience during the qualifiers Or really try to avoid mechanical breakdowns like I did in the pre-final which cost me yet another uh, couple of positions so these are the kinds of things uh, that really are great but they do feel pretty frustrating at the time but they're great because I'd rather make these mistakes and learn from them than make no mistake and not even realize that there's something you know there uh, for me to kind of gather a set of experiences from so that's what I actually am craving at the moment not that I want to make mistakes but you get what I'm saying it's just that you want to be able to see what I guess the least ideal situation looks like so that the most ideal can become more of a consistent um, expectation really at the end of the day so again pretty exciting day it was at night so there were as I mentioned a different set of challenges associated to that on and off the track uh, but I loved every moment of it I was so tired by the time you know we packed up um, you know and uh, went to bed Saturday night and then on Sunday came back home that even when I did come back home I, I mean I took a pretty long nap uh, just because I was trying to recover from just the amount of physical um, you know effort that you have to take and just uh, how it takes a toll on your body so uh, you know uh, this is that one factor about go-karting as well uh, these are the things that make me keep wanting to come back over and over again and I plan on continuing to do so as a matter of fact the next race is going to be on July 30th and 31st and this is what we call a double header so we have one layout on Saturday and then one layout on Sunday so it's gonna be a pretty tough weekend and most likely it'll be the same way where I won't really have time to stand in front of a camera and record myself but I'll most likely end up doing uh, this kind of like a mini docuseries if you want to call it and uh, kind of tell you how I felt after the fact uh, but again it was a great night I really enjoyed it I uh, got to meet a lot of people afterwards uh, got to know them got to understand them you know did a little bit of socializing um, and all that great stuff that comes with such a small community but a very tight-knit community um, but anyway that really kind of sums up how my weekend went it was awesome even if I had some disappointing results it doesn't matter what matters is did I walk away from it wanting more and that is exactly uh, what was the end state for me. I definitely want more and I'm looking forward to it. Anyhow, guys, that is all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. And before I do leave, please hit that thumbs up, please subscribe, and please share this channel with everybody you know. I will see you at the next Apex. Bye-bye.